Okay. Right. Um, Pre-warning in this one. Um, planes are going by, so we're not far from Heathrow. Yeah, yeah. Rather them than me, because I hate flying. But uh, there you go. Um, and this late summer sun is it already about popping? Too pretentious. I can see you now. That's better. Right. Let's talk about your career in acting. How did it get started for you? Oh, I think, like many people, I, uh, you want to be an actor from a very young age, and some people do something about it. Go to the National Youth Theatre and drama school, normally go, and others take kind of more in, uh, indirect route. I did. You know, I went to university first and did, did modern languages. And then I what uni? What, what uni? At Kiel University, okay. French and German, yeah. And then I went backpacking, travelling a little bit, still figuring out what to do. Um, and I met actors on my way, and I thought this is interesting. And then when I was in Tokyo teaching English for a few years, I met a lady called Sandy Weiss from New York. Mm -hmm. She'd been to the Neighborhood Playhouse, and she was teaching um, sample advisor technique, method acting. So mm -hmm. I studying with her, and then left Japan, came back and went to Lambda, and then started the, the difficult part of actually being seen, getting an agent, getting casting, getting good at castings, and, and moving on. And it's a very varied career, sometimes up, sometimes down. <laughs> Hopefully more than down. Was Lambda a, a difficult drama school to get into? Like talking audition-wise and things? Yeah, I think it probably was. They say that they see about 4,000 people for about 40 places. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's, that's 1%. But I, I think, in honestly, looking about probably 3,500 people are not that serious about the application. So you're left with four to 500 for 40 places, so one in 10. Um, uh, they were all, they look for men because, you know, sadly they have a lot more women girls mm -hmm. applicants. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're a man going to drama school, you have a better chance. It is a top drama school, and I applied for a few others, and was the one I wanted, so I was lucky to get it. But it is a, it's a good school, there's some great people in my area. Um, Plain thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, what was that? Exactly. That's a good play people in my, in my year. We have 40 in our class, some Americans, some Brits. Most have left the industry now, some are directors, or some are producers and writers. The ones that have stayed, uh, amongst myself, you have Benedict Cumberbatch, who's done extremely well. Um, Roberts is in the States now, John Lowtown, I think he's, he's in the States, Georgina Rylance, that's just from my group. So it's a good school, it gets, it gets good people in, and then it pushes out good actors as well. Do you remember the first piece of acting you did where you got paid? Your first professional bit of work? What were you doing? Yeah, actually, about six months after Lambda, I got a call um, to go to the Oxford for Touring Theatre Company and audition for Heathcliff, which is a great role for oh, a wow. Deutsche man. <laughs> it was one of those lucky things, I think, the director had a chap in mind that mm -hmm. he'd worked with before, so he wasn't looking to cast a new person, and the chap couldn't do it, so mm -hmm. he had to start looking. And, and I went in there and I was very psyched. It's a great book. Everybody knows the, the, the novel. Um, read the book the night before, picked out chunks of, chunks of dialogue from it, thinking we might use those. And, and thankfully, the lady that rewrote it, wrote it for this company, had kept the same dialogue. So I went in there, and a lot of obviously, your first job is a lot of adrenaline, more than most. You've got the adrenaline, which served me well for that character. It was pretty wound up. Mm -hmm. A lot of passion, obviously. I think passion is the word that describes Wuthering Heights. <laughs> So I knew it was great. It was just before Christmas, the audition started in January. So that was that was paid work for a ten or so to it. What do you prefer, stage or TV and film? To be honest, I love each one individually. Mm -hmm. I used to think that uh, the films, obviously, watch more films. When you think you might be coming out, you watch more films. It's a film actor that you want to be. Mm -hmm. But the three disciplines are completely different. And when you're doing one, when you're rehearsing for. Th the stage, you love it. When you're on stage, you love it. When you're doing TV, it's a different discipline. It's much quicker. Mm -hmm. Much quicker. When you're doing the film, you allow more, more time if you like, more takes, and each one is different. And I think it's wonderful. I mean, with stage, you get the results straight away. Mm -hmm. Because, bang, you're up there, and you get to redo it every night to try and get better. Film and TV, that's it. It's done. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get a chance for a reshoot, particularly TV. One or two takes now on a soap. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And that again is an exciting way of working. I worked on Hollyoaks for a very short time, but it's, uh, it was so quick, I had a lot more respect for soap actors, if you like. Really? They don't have the, the time to indulge. And mm -hmm. they're not going to get to do it the next night and the next night and improve on their work. It has to be instant. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, uh, so I would say I like obviously.
And just, um, we, we obviously, we've done a, a, an interview about your, um, your acting school. Um, in recent years, you, you, you've opened your acting school. So just for this, hmm. uh, just for an actor's introduction, could you just tell us a little bit, like in a nutshell, sure. a little bit what, about what you've been doing in the last few years? Yeah, well, what, what, tell us about, about your invention. Well, the, the London Actors Workshop is a school that I run on uh, Sundays in Covent Garden. We mm-hmm. do three 12 week courses. Uh, when I say 12 week, it's every Sunday, so it's 12 Sundays in a row. We have seven different tutors come in. We teach a a variety of disciplines like method acting, uh, camera technique, uh, script analysis, sight reading, audition technique, screen combat, the Shakespeare voice. Casting director evenings, we get three casting directors to come in from the BBC or from the film world, the theatre world. And then we have an industry showcase at the end of the course where we focus on bringing agency and getting people seen and getting representation and doing a public performance. And that's uh, maybe that I've been for about uh, well, first seven, seven years now. I've been doing the London Actors Workshop, and again, it's as they say, most characters need a second string to their bow to keep themselves alive. Between jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, <coughs> hurry up, Mr. Plane. <laughs> Sorry about this. It's a great location, which is absolutely beautiful. We saw the uh, the opening ceremony for the you know, um, mixed the fireworks. But unfortunately, we got the fireworks, uh, Um. What would be your ideal role to play? What, what part would you love to play? I mean, Because Heathcliff probably yeah, takes Heathcliff some following. Well, I, I played John Proctor in The Crucible again on a tour a couple of years ago, and that was a phenomenal role. When I read Which, it, who was that, sorry? John Proctor. John in Proctor. The Crucible, yeah, I think Daniel Day Lewis played it on film most famously. Okay. Um, you know, Arthur Miller, I read that and I thought, wow, this piece is astonishing. This is going to take some doing. And that's a great chance. I went to see my, my coach, Val Colgan, and I said, Val, how can you approach this? Um, I've worked through it three times now with Stephen Burkhoff, which is phenomenal. Stephen really sets a high standard and it doesn't take any any laziness from you as an actor. So I really enjoy working with, with Stephen, anything we do. Um, I think probably along those lines, a Heathcliff slash John Proctor character on a film would be wonderful, obviously. The advantage with film and TV, of course, is that it gets you seen. It does help build your profile. Five or six million people at night watch a soap. Mm-hmm. Whatever, whatever stage you do, not many not people. Not, you won't have millions of people see you. Mm-hmm. And if you're in a big film, you can change your whole career, your whole life. But to answer your question more succinctly, <laughs> be a dramatic, strong, good character, conflicted character. <laughs> The interesting thing about this video is I'm having to wait for a plane to go by <laughs> before I can ask you another question. Yeah, and it's lethal to ask an, ad, an actor to talk about themselves, isn't it? Because you'll run out of tape or whatever you're working on. What does acting do for you, John? Uh, gives you a pretty hard life, you know, so. <laughs> but The actual act of acting, I think it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a craft, like, like anything, like, like painting, dancing writing, uh, playing an instrument, you're doing all of these in a sense as an actor, so it's a form of self-expression, um, which I obviously enjoy, it's, it's, it's of all the, it's of all the arts, all the arts, it's the one I enjoy watching and doing mm-hmm. the most, so it's, it's a form of self-fulfillment, I mean, it's got nothing to do with actually having a career, which is a different kettle of fish, but in its, most, in its, in its essence, mm-hmm. of all the things one can choose to do in this country in, in 2012, that's what it does for me. It allows me to, to, to play characters and to express aspects of myself that might otherwise be resigned to the therapist's chair. <laughs> FTQ. A sport you like to watch. A sport I like to watch, football. It only is one sport. Best concert you've ever been to? Um, wow, well, I've seen some great concerts. I saw the specials at the Alexander Palace. Year, but probably the most memorable was seeing the gorillas in, uh, in uh, the junction in Cambridge. The gorillas with only maybe 200 people there. Mm-hmm. So this was to, you know, to get that close, to get that. And it was Damon Albarn's birthday, his 42nd birthday. So to have that kind of private affair, if you like, you feel quite special. And the music was fantastic. Also Mick Jones and Paul Simonon from The Clash mm-hmm. playing with the gorillas that night. So that was, that was a bit we can be cool gig, yeah. <laughs> um. A film you would advise other people to watch that was not a commercial success. I always, Wait for the play. I That's the great thing about this show. It's very raw and it's very real. 
and unrehearsed and unedited. I'm terrible wearing these. I feel really bad <laughs> wearing these sunglasses, but it is so bright. But, you know, this is a film I always recommend anybody whenever we have this conversation. If you know, if you're in a pub or you're on, on a location, shoot. And it was a film that was out in 89, 90 by a guy called Phil Joanu. I think it's J-O-A-N-O-U. But it's he directed R- Rattle and Hum. By you too. Exactly, you've yeah. shown your age there, but yeah, but that's true, he did. <laughs> and then this was a phenomenal film, it was with Gary Oldman and Ed Harris and um, Sean Wright, sorry, Sean, Sean Penn, yep. Robin Wright Penn, um, John C. Riley, phenomenal film called uh, State of Grace. Right, the yeah. Of film. And I know I, I saw somewhere Dustin Hoffman said that he thought Gary Oldman's role was the best gangster role he'd seen. It's uh, St. Hell's Kitchen in New York. The trouble was, it came out at the same time as Goodfellas. Mm-hmm. And it died a death. State of Grace. Phenomenal film. Mm-hmm. Best holiday of your life so far? By plane? <laughs> because, because when I was in my early 20s, I went backpacking. When you're backpacking, it just seems to be like... Yeah, I'm exactly. Like, working, which you have to do to, to work to keep your mind. So, I don't tend to take many holidays, um, but... It can be included in the backpacking, maybe, maybe the best part, but the best, the highlights. It's really, it's really, it's really, I'll tell you what, it's really weird because when you're <coughs> becoming an actor, you don't have as much money to travel as much as you might like to. Mm-hmm. And only just uh, last year, I went down to Cornwall with my girlfriend and her son for, um, for a week in a caravan. It sounds like a fairly cheap holiday, and it was, it was an actually cheap holiday, but it was the record April, the heat in Cornwall, in this weather. Mm-hmm. You probably would never take a plane, it was absolutely beautiful. Mm-hmm. So that, that, that's up there. I also went to Marrakesh as well, which is also fantastic. <laughs> but now, I have to say, anything involving my little nephew in Colorado. So, oh. <laughs> there you go. There's three. I can't give you one, can I? McDonald's or KFC? <laughs> oh, dear. Well, I'm a vegetarian. I'm a lapsed vegetarian. I lapse occasionally, but no. Um, oh, man. oh, well, McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> they do a veggie burger. KFC. I haven't eaten KFC for 20 years. <laughs> I wouldn't even know if they do tweet corn, right? They get corn. <laughs> My questions are random. <laughs> okay, John, thank you. And usually I say, may great roles come your way at the end, but I'm actually going to say, may great roles and great students come ah, your way. I thought that the workshop, yes. Roles first, <laughs> students second. Great, thank you. Cheers, John. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> <It's my tea. laughs> oh, lovely.